We are here with uh, Wabash head coach Kyle Brummett and uh, junior forward Sam Comer. Uh, coach, we'll start with you following the, uh, the team's loss in the opening round to Whitewater. Uh, just give us your overview of the game today. Uh, I thought it was a really good D3 basketball game. Um, I, I was uh, impressed with, with their size and talent, physicality. Um, and I was really proud of, of the fight that, that we had. So, you know, I, I just, um, you know, I'm a D3 guy. So I've, I've been in a number of these. Unfortunately, I've, I've been on the short end against Coach Miller a few different times. Um, but I, I felt like it was a really good uh, D3 basketball game. Any questions from the group? John? Coach, Kayla, two halves. What worked well in the second half? And looking back at the second, at the first half, I mean, and going back to the second half, what do you wish you'd done better? Well, we, we guarded them obviously much better in the in the first half. You know, I think um, you know it was really physical, um, and that's that's kind of who we are. Um, our league is really physical, um, and you know, like I, I I thought, and you know, you can look at it like the game was was pretty evenly officiated, 29 fouls to 26 fouls. But clearly those guys went in and they were, they were going to call it tighter in the second half. You know, both teams shoot uh, you know, 24 and 21 free throws in the second half. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I guess to your question, I would have liked to have fouled them less. Um, you know, we felt like we guarded them well in the first half and got them to miss, um, you know, and then both teams, so many possessions ended uh, with free throws. Um, so, you know, I, I would have liked to have fouled less. I mean, you know, we had, we had, uh, we had too many turnovers. Um, you know, we had, we had some turnovers down the stretch that probably we were playing from behind, but, um, you know, probably really didn't allow us to, to get to uh, that down one point. Right, like we made some runs, and but you know we, we had some possessions that typically have not ended in turnovers um, in the second half, and then uh, you know like there was a lot of the second half that that I wouldn't do differently. Um, you know, like we had some really good shots that just didn't go in. I mean, you know, uh, obviously we had four guys in double figures. Shippert was was nine. I mean, that's been a recipe for success for us. Um, you know, we just can't give up 90 points. So, uh, you know, I, I, I was, I liked a lot of what we had going. Um, you know, we've got some tough guys. We've got some good players. Some of them are going to have a little sleepless nights. They're going to, they're going to feel a little bit what the coach feels at times because we had some good shots that didn't, didn't go in, but that's what makes it so great. You know, if you're really invested, um, you know, even the the agony, uh, you learn to love it. Sam, coming off of what the coach just talked about, you had a good tournament run last year. You make the tournament this year. How has that made you a better player? But how does that also drive you to get back here again next year? Yeah, I mean, coming off last year, uh, people didn't really know what to expect this year from us. But... Uh, you know, everyone this summer was working jobs, and after their jobs, they're going into the gym, they're getting in the weight room. Um, so I think everyone just put in the work after last year, and you can obviously see the translation to it this year. Um, and we kind of we, we just touched on that in the locker room, like we got to push each other again this off season uh, to ensure that we get better, improve as a team, so that we can be back here next year with even bigger goals. So. Sam, follow up. If somebody had walked onto the court after your first practice in October and told you you'd be 21 and 7 this year, win the North Coast tournament, and come back to D3 and be ahead 33 30 in the first game, you probably would want to have that person committed, right? If I'm, a, if I'm being honest, I don't know if I would have believed him at the time, but yeah. we just continued to work and uh, take what the coaches gave us. And I think we've, we're establishing ourselves as a legit program in D3. Yeah. So. And where do you go from here? I mean, it might take a couple of days off and get right back in the gym. So it's 
That's all we can do. Coach, this team from some other coaches has been described as a team that believes they can win any game. And you saw that again today with the way they battled back to try and to try and get back into this game. The fact that they all come back next year, what type of foundation does that give this team coming that, into the that's a really good way to put it, Brent. We have a great foundation. You know, the program is established and and the returning guys, um, they know how hard it is. They know that the other teams are going to be talented and work hard. They know the other coaches are going to coach them hard. They know how good our league is. Uh, I think there's some people maybe outside of our league that, that you know, Worcester's just like Whitewater. You know, I mean, they're, 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 they're every bit as good as an NCAA tournament team. Uh, you know, I would say over half of the field. Uh, our guys know that. Um, but, uh, and you know, my, my sidekick, Sully, he reminded him in the locker room, like, no, no, no team uh, one year to the next is going to be the same. You know, so uh, this team needs to have their sights set on uh, winning the league, hosting the conference tournament, and uh, being the, the first team to host the NCAA tournament. Um, and that's going to be lofty, you know, like John's question, you know, like, and I, I love that Sam answered it honestly. <clears throat> I'm only looking at these guys trying to figure out how to win 20 plus. So when we were sitting at uh, 19 at the end of the year going into the conference tournament, uh, I, I, I thought we, were, we could be better. Um, now, you know, like, I didn't, I didn't know exactly how we were going to be better coming off of last year's team. And they're incredible. And, and I love them. Um, but these guys, they're, they're invested in a very similar way. They're going to have to work harder. Um, but they will because that's what we do at Wabash. Okay, anybody want to ask the last question? Coach, yeah, it was your last after the game last week, last Saturday. Um, you said this team has more Wabash always fight in it than any team you had before. Yeah. Did you see that today? I, I definitely did. I mean, you know, we're from a height standpoint, we're small in there. Um, you know, their their big guy is really good. Um, you know, I mean, we we beat on him. I mean, it's unfortunate because when you're old like me, you know, you have some deja vu moments. I mean, I remember sitting in the press conference at Worcester after coaching my uh, defiance team that had uh, the head coach at Rose Holman and the head coach at Manchester University um, had just lost to Whitewater. And the Whitewater guys came out of the press conference. Before we did, we had the longer cooling off period, and they said that they'd never been beat on like our guys beat on. And, uh, you know, at that point, I, I probably didn't know. I might have wanted to, but I didn't know that I was going to be the head coach at Wabash, and I didn't know that we were going to have all that fight. But my team fought. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of this group. Um, last year's group had uh, more talent than probably any Wabash team uh, ever. And, you know, like I, I don't I – don't, I love my alums. I love my 82 team. Um, you know, Pete was a, a big monster. We would have had to foul him too. Uh, but this team, uh, in my time, uh, they, they, they'll fight you, um, you know, to give, our, to give us a chance. Coach, thank you very much. Thanks, Congratulations on a great year.